Good day and salutations, people of the internet who decide to listen to podcast episodes and came across our fabulous one called Ramble Shrapnel. Although this is our little bits and pieces of the main podcast of Ramble Shamble. If you guys try to say those two together, probably get a bit of a tongue twister. But yet again, it is the host you all love and know, Mackie. And I am joined by all the beloved and you probably like him better is Jotun. Say hi, Jotun. Hi. Hi, Jotun. <laughs> he's learning, people. He's learning. He's caught on, finally. After it, how long I've been asking him to say hi, Jotun. He's finally been, been a smart ass, which I know he is. Cracking but wise. again, this is... <laughs> But again, this is only a small little piece of the main episode of which we had done called Time Travel. And we did it with our guest host. Wasn't that correct, Jotun? Yes, it was with Jules. Ooh. And he brought some real interesting ideas and insights. And I was technically the host in that. And we didn't, unfortunately, have Jules on this shared episode again but nonetheless we were really grateful for him to join and we definitely have future plans for him to come into another episode or two maybe he'll do his own little thing but we're here to support and help grow our community but in that episode it was quite clear that we were or at least i was i was really disappointed in time travel and it was per the discussions that we had before that time there's some good time travel concepts that some media do well and it sparked an interest uh definitely in me i'm not sure in Jotun, but we in this episode instead of being all down and negative towards time travel let's focus on the positive side of time travel Jotun, do you have any examples of positive time travel time travel in media or even in books if you have any interesting ones to bring up yeah i just want to point out that books are also uh, a medium mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so uh saying any but, uh, examples a lot, a lot of people media doesn't f- include books <laughs> yeah but a lot of people also like would focus more onto the visual media rather than the written media no no, so, no i understand just wanted to make that clear for you <laughs> so i think a great one to look at is the og or what i regard, regard as the og of time travel stories which is uh rather suitably called The Time Machine. And I think it was written by like Orson Welles, but it's, it's, it's this really, really great story where this guy, he builds himself a time machine and he goes into, I think the distant past, but then also the distant future. H.G. Wells, not Orson Welles. Um, <laughs> Orson Welles, I think was like a movie director. But anyway, um, so, he builds this time machine and I think when he goes to the future, sorry, this is like quite an old movie. It's like a 2003 movie or something. So I'm pretty sure I've seen it, but I can't quite remember it. Yeah. So I, d- I don't remember everything that well myself, but I think he goes into the future and it, it goes in. I, I've talked about this before in various episodes, but he goes into kind of like speculative evolution because... Well, not kind of, but actually is speculative evolution because he he imagines a society where there's a, like a civilization living on the surface and a civilization living underground. And the civilization on the surface is like living in fear and the one that's underground, um, like the people underground have over time developed to be troglodytes that have pale skin, and kind of beastly and monstrous <laughs> and like buff and everything. And these people, the Morlocks, hunt the people on the surface as a food source. And that's why the people on the surface are so fearful and everything. But it's it's just such a cool concept and I, I really like the idea of it. And maybe it's just because it's one of the first stories that I got introduced to for time travel. I, I just like really, really enjoy it. Mm-hmm. And another great example that's a, a recent one is I think it's a Netflix series called Dark. Um, it's a, it's originally a German series, but they I think they handled the concept of time travel really well because what they did was probably the best way in my view because it avoided a lot of the paradoxes of time travel. And basically, I don't want to give away too many spoilers, but there's like a closed time loop 
that's formed throughout the actions of the series. And that's actually how time travel would probably come about because there needs to be a causal chain of events and they maintain it through that series. So that's what I like about it. But for the most part, we might have seemed like we were really criticizing time travel in the main episode, but I actually really like time travel stuff. For, for the most part, when I go into series and things, I, <laughs> I just go in looking to have a fun time and I don't want to pick holes in things. But if someone asks me, like, what do you think of this and how they use time travel, then I, then I get critical. Then I go into a different, <laughs> different mindset. But yeah, otherwise, I, I actually just like having, having a fun time. And you? No, I'm also... Yeah, look, I, as much as I'm critical towards time travel, the only time I'm really critical towards it if it is a serious type of situation. When it's fun like Back to the Future, I don't mind it. It's actually quite a fun thing. But when they're trying to say like the only way to solve their problems or the best way, to, and they, they try to go too scientific and too realistic, then I start putting my own like scientific mind towards it and said, okay, I'm going to hold you to that because you've now definitioned the t the how time travel works in your theoretical universe. So if you don't conform to that, I feel like you're cheating me because now you, you say that anything can happen. So it's like saying if, Jotun, if you were, you are a great singer, but now if I tell you that you've been singing all wrong your entire life, even though you've been singing this particular way your entire life, all of a sudden now it's it's frowned upon. It just feels like you've just changed the rule book all of a sudden because it's now no longer source meeting everyone's expectations. So so you so you go into a thing looking through the lens that they give you. Yes, so if it's like if they can't quite keep up with their ideology, so they're like saying, This is how things happen. I'm like, Okay, cool, I I can respect that. And then all of a sudden it starts falling apart and you're like, Hey guys, are you getting bored of your concept or are you just like are you unable to keep up with it and that's when i think that's a then probably not the best time to include time travel because it just didn't quite work <laughs> but irrespective of that hmm. uh, i will say one of my more favorite uh time travel concepts is basically it is a concept in my opinion because it is time travel in a sense but it's like a redo time travel button But it's like a redo time travel button. So you might think of like Rick and Morty. You know when Morty had that little device where if he died, he would teleport it back to... Before you go on, I think I think I know exactly what you're going to say. <laughs> but, but do so, do so. So I'm trying to reach out to everyone's familiarity because Rick and Morty have done it more recently as far as I'm aware. But there's also a movie called Edge of Tomorrow, which is also does it, and Groundhog Day. I like Groundhog Day a bit better. The reason why is it, it touches, it's a lot more similar to Rick and Morty's episode where Morty has the device where he can scan himself before he does a certain action. And then he can, when he dies in that particular way, Itself would reset to that particular point where he scanned himself. So it's such a clever concept where you really need to get to explore the decision of a redo button. So in like video games where you like saying, I wonder if that water's poisonous. Hmm. And you click the save button, then you jump off into a poisonous water, die, and then you and then you got that clarity of saying, huh, it was poisonous. And then you just reload back to the point where before you jumped into the water. And yeah, so the reason why I like Groundhog Day the most is because you see the real stages of the person trying to understand the situation that they've been put into. So for people that don't know about Groundhog Day, it's quite a simple concept. The guy is stuck in an infinite loop where at the end of his day, after he falls asleep, he will wake up again at the start of the day. Everything is back to the way it was before he went to sleep. And you see initially, he was very afraid, very confused. He tried to like convince people, I am literally waking up on the same day. But then the second day, he gets smarter, he gets wiser. And he starts taking advantage of people because he really knows how everyone thinks. And you see the like the, the whole transgression of his like mentality change over and morph over time. And it's quite such a I, I like that concept of time travel because it doesn't go too far ahead and not too far back. But it shows you that having the ability to change one day has such dramatic influence and 
doing everything right and being respectful. It, it just was a great movie. I know in future, was, was it also done in Futurama? Yes, and I'm not too sure. Pretty sure Futurama touched on this kind of concept. Um, yes, but I don't know if it was an infinite loop. In Futurama, this is something that I was going to slap at you if, if you mentioned the other thing that I thought about <laughs> pressing the button and all that. But in Futurama, they make, the professor makes a, like a remote control where if you press the button, it takes you back, I think, exactly 30 seconds or a minute into the past. And, <laughs> um, uh, and obviously, Fry and Lila get a hold of it or whatever. But what happens in the end is that Fry is falling off of a building like the Empire State Building or something in New York. And he's got the remote in his hand. And Leela is at the bottom of the building. And Fry's free-falling from the top of the building now for some reason. <laughs> and, like, he's got it in his hand. So every time he gets close to the bottom, he presses the button again. And the, the <laughs> professor made a clever fallback or fail-safe for this remote that you can't press the button to reset time in a period shorter than a minute after pressing the button because if you could do that then you could effectively like press the button and then immediately press the button again to go back two minutes in time and all that but the the, the professor knows you don't dice with time that much so he makes it so that uh, you press the button and then a timer for a minute comes on so that you can't travel further back in time than one minute so fuck Fry is in an infinite loop going down this free fall um, because he has to press the button as soon as he can while he's falling so that he can keep on falling and not <laughs> die and splat on the floor. But then the problem comes that Fry is going to fall asleep eventually. Yeah, so I won't spoil more of the episode, but that, that is what, that, that's an example in Futurama, yeah, of a time loop. Yeah. So... There's some really fun concepts in time travel that I just really enjoy. And just having that like replay button, just, I don't know, it, it interests me because I know for me at least, if I had that ability to like restart my day and do it as many times as I want, because I, I won't lie, like when I, just before I was prepping for an exam, said, jeez, only if I had a button right now that I could kind of just restart the day or even stop time, because that would be infinite awesome because that's also a time concept where where you stop time and then the person in the non-stop that stop time can do everything that they want but at the same time i think if you were able to stop time obviously there's a lot of other things but i think people will just ultimately be so lazy because you got all the time in the world for me at least i don't think i would enjoy having the ability to stop time um it would be cool but i think it would be too much power in the palm of a hand yeah i think <laughs> okay well that's a really tricky one because i actually think that it opens more, like, more problems than it solves. Because yeah, 100%. then it's like, is it just, like, how, how, how does that work? Do you, do you <laughs> not age? Like, it, it doesn't really help you if you can stop time completely, but your body is still aging. And then also, yeah, they just hold all sorts of rules and things. Because if, you, if you're the yep. only thing that can still move throughout frozen time then that means you can't use any method of transport or anything like that because mm -hmm. uh that stuff's all frozen so then you'd have to do like in that same episode of futurama where basically all you can manipulate are things that you can actually carry and then um probably like purely mechanical things like a, a bicycle or something that's pumped by your own movement but most traveling across the world is a no-go because it's too far although you would love to go sightseeing <laughs> and um like how does your metabolism work you know or well, that those are all like pretty big pretty big questions but i would still love it no 100 um, if, if i was in a single day loop though i would just be such a a glutton and I would just live it up. Like, I would be a glutton and I would go, like, VR gaming. Because at the end of the day, you're just going to go back to your normal shape. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, I don't have the co the consequences of eating 10 pizzas in one go or something. I don't, I don't have the consequences <laughs> of, like, geez, I don't know, skydiving or something without a parachute. Like, yeah. Although that does open the question of well, like, that... what happens when you die in a closed time loop. Yeah, 
I can't actually remember the Groundhog episode. Like, I'm, I'm pretty sure you do come back to life. But again, it's a, it is a very interesting thing to have like no consequence. That's why I, I like that. I like that concept more because it's like saying you have the unlimited ability to do whatever you wish. Yeah. And you see, at one at one stage, they get so bored or so sick and tired of being the same loop that they just want out. And you see the desperation because now that they they repeating the same day, so everyone else is doing this exact same thing, completely normal. But you now experience everything you can experience in, within that one day, and now you feel like I need something more. You played all the video games, you've read all the books, you've done everything you could possibly think to do. Now what do you do? Uh, <laughs> I think that I would become a Buddhist and try to <laughs> like <laughs> transcend and reach nirvana <laughs> because that's that's like the only art you have oh, what, what other solace is there no but that's why uh the, the meaning behind groundhog day because like edge of tomorrow they there's a cause for the repeated day um before we end there's a game called outer wild uh Jotun, i'm not sure if you've played that game no but it's a brilliantly amazing game where you basically a spaceship pilot there just to explore the universe. There's uh there's beasts, there's creatures, but it's beautifully made. And you, I won't spoil anything of that game because I want to encourage anyone who hasn't played that game to play that game because it's so beautifully made, so in depth, and so much story and exploration at your. And it's it's one of the greatest games I've seen use the concept of repeated death time loop time travel. Well, before you end. There is the, the thing that I thought you were going to say about pressing a button, and that is Prince of Persia. Oh, <laughs> yes. Oh, that was a good game. Yeah. Oh, I still love that game. <laughs> yeah. But I, th I think that's where we have to cut it off from this uh, shorter episode of the longer episode. If people, again, if you haven't listened to the main episode, we strongly encourage you to listen to it on our main podcast, Ramble Shramble. It is a part of the same podcast, but we just call it Ramble Shramble rather than Ram Ramble Shrapnel. And again, guys, your comments really do mean a lot to us. You can get to, you can share your comments on YouTube. And, but the best way is to join our Discord, become part of a community, share your art, share your gaming, if you, and maybe you want to join us in a future podcast. But I think that's all from my side as your as the host, Mackie. Anything from your side, Yota? Just have a great day, everyone. Enjoy all the great media that's out there. Such a good word of advice from a time traveler from the distant future. <laughs> but that's bye for me then. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone.